This video is going to show you how to run an ordinal regression analysis in R. So we use this when our outcome variable, our dependent variable, is ordinal. So ordinal variables is where we've got a categorical variable, but we can rank the categories in order. We also do it when we have more than two categories. If you only have two categories, then you can do a logistic regression on that. However, if we've got more than two categories and we can put them in an order, then we can run an ordinal regression. There's a few different ways you can do an ordinal regression in R. The package I'm going to largely show you is the ordinal package. We're also going to use this R companion package that's going to give us some pseudo R squareds. We're going to use the mass package, which is going to produce an ordinal regression in a different way. And we're going to use this branch package which will produce us a test of proportional odds, which is one of the assumption checks. And I'll cover all these in a bit more detail when we get to them as well. Obviously, you only have to install these once, but you will have to pull them out of your library each time you want to do an ordinal regression. And here, I'm just going to turn off scientific notation as well to get exact p-values. I'm going to read in the data set. It's just a CSV file here called ordinal. This is where it sits on my computer. You'll have to change it so it sits in the location on your computer when you run this in. So we just run that in and we can view this file now. We've got sub, which is just a um, participant number, subject number, we've got their age, sex, we've got the stupidity, how stupid they are, higher scores equals more stupid, and Coldplay category, or Coldplay cat as it's called here. That's not a cat that likes Coldplay. It is the category of how much they like Coldplay. And I will explain this in a bit more detail when I label the variables in a moment. But this is going to be our dependent variable. And we're going to have three predictors in our regression model. We're going to label our nominal data, label our categorical data. So we've got our Coldplay cat. And we're, this is going to be, we call this a factor. And it's got levels 0, 1, 2, and 3. And this was just a questionnaire on what people thought of Coldplay. And if they answered zero, they said Coldplay were the worst. Worst being in capitals because they are truly awful. One is that they are bad. Two is they are okay. And three is that you'd pay to see them. So, you know, some you know really, really terrible human beings responding three on this scale. So we can label our Coldplay variable and give it categories and name. So we just say ordinal df, which is our data frame, what we called it when we read it in, ordinal df, and then we say select the Coldplay category variable, and then we're labeling that as a factor. So we can run that in. And then you'll see we've also got sex of our participant as well and we can just label this for the same process they're coded as one and two we can just label that as male as one female as two so we can also label sex as well so we'll run that and then we just look at our data set now and you can see you know, i've got male and females in there and then we've got the worst bad okay bad the worst pay to see them and so on so we've just labeled that data set it just makes your interpretation a little bit easier later on so we've set up our data set and we're now just going to put these into an ordinal regression model. The first thing we're going to do actually is compute a null model. I'm just going to do this to get an overall measure of model fit. So our model null, so that's what we're going to call this model. And then our command is CLM and this command comes from the ordinal package. And then we just say as dot factor brackets Coldplay cat. So that's our dependent variable, then tilde, predicted by, and then we just put a one in there. We're going to put no predictors in this model at all. It's just our null model. The data is our ordinal data frame, and the link is log it. And we're just going to run this as our null model. We're not actually, we're not going to look at this model for now. It's of no interest to us at, the, at this very moment in time, particularly. But we're going to compare this model to the model with our predictors in. So we'll set up a model with predictors in it next. 
So this is our model with predictors, and we'll just call this model one. And this is the CLM command again, exactly the same as before, as factor, call play cat, tilde, then they're going to see if it's predicted by age, sex, which is factor, and stupidity. So how stupid our participants are, higher scores mean more stupid. And data is our ordinal DF again, and the link is log it again. So now we simply just done another model, same command, but we've got predictors in it. And then the first thing we can do is see whether our model with our predictors in it, model one, is a better fit than our null model. So we can test that. So this is straightforward to do. We just ask for an um, analysis of variance, model null versus model one. Run. We'll just go back down here. And as you can see, Comparing our two models, there's our likelihood ratio test statistic. Degrees of freedom is three. We've got three predictors in the model. And here is our p-value. We've also got the AIC as well. So we can use the AIC as another way of ascertaining whether the model is better fit. Just remember, the values don't mean anything particularly. What matters is the comparison between the two. And as we can see here, it is lower by about 13. So Model 1 is a better fit based on the AIC and the likelihood ratio test statistic as well is significant. So there's a significant difference between the two models. And we can just write this up. We can just write our likelihood ratio test statistic degrees of freedom p-value. The other thing that we can do, and this is what our, our companion package does, we can also get some pseudo R squares for the model. Now there's arguments for and against using these values. Um, it's not the place to have them here, I'll just show you how to do them. So we just ask for Nagelkirk, which is a pseudo R fit, which you'll be familiar with probably from the likes of logistic regression. And we just take, say, fit equals model one, and then null equals our null model again. So that's why we confuse our null model earlier. It's going to give us more than just a Nagel Kirk fit in to see that. So we can run that. We can see it's got the McFadden, Cox and Snell, and Nagel Kirk there as well. So we've got these different model fit indices. Generally speaking, one isn't necessarily reported more than another. So it's just it's up to you really which one that you choose to report. You will see here that we've also it also produces our likelihood ratio test as well. So we can just, we could have just derived it in that way straight away as well if we wanted. And then you'll see the statistics we get are almost exactly the same. The likelihood ratio test stat, which is actually chi-squared test stat. And if you want to know where the, the log likelihood difference comes from here, it's the difference between those two values there and you can see we get a very similar p-value just rounded slightly differently so all the differences here are minor rounding differences so as opposed to just comparing the two with our ANOVA command that we used earlier we could produce it this way as well now that's just model fit information of course what about our predictors in our model well for that we just need summary model one and this is the summary of our model. Now you can see it's got two sets of coefficients here. It's got our coefficients and threshold coefficients. I will not be talking about these in any great detail at the moment. However, these are the ones that are particularly important. This is the association between age and liking of cold play. That's a regression coefficient, it's standard error. And of course we've got the Z value there, which produces us our P value. As you as you can see, there's a significant negative association between age and the liking of Coldplay categories dependent variable. So that means as people's age goes up, the more likely to dislike Coldplay, the more likely to be in the worst, bad, etc., compared to be being in the higher categories. Sex so shows no significant effect at all. So there's no um, association between sex and liking of Coldplay. And then stupidity, as we can see, there's a significant positive association. 
So as stupidity goes up, our participants are more likely to be in a higher category, the more likely to feel more positive towards Coldplay. So these regression coefficients refer to an increase from one category to another at any level in the ordinal structure. So it doesn't mean you're more likely to pay to see them than think they're the worst per se. It's just refer to an increase from one category to the next at any level in the ordinal structure of the dependent variable. And this is why the test of parallel lines that we'll do later on is so important. Now, just like any other regression that we do, you can get confidence intervals. Not along with the conf int command, we can run that. And there's our confidence intervals for our regression coefficients. And we could also get odds ratios as well. So we can just exponentialize the coefficients from model one, and then this produces our odds ratios. Now, as you can see, it produces odds ratios for the threshold coefficients as well as the coefficients. So again, we're going to ignore these three, these threshold ones, and we can see this is the odds ratio for age, sex, and stupidity as well. So these are our odds ratios. So these are the ones that matter for the predictors. And again, just like always, we can also get exponentialized confidence intervals as well. So exponentialize the confidence intervals from model one. So we're just really adding X to the command. So we can run that. These now relate to these variables that we've made here. So we can just write these up. We can write them up with the odds ratios or the regression coefficients and the confidence intervals. So just in this example here, this is how you'd write up the regression coefficients for the effect that we've seen for stupidity. And we can give it standard error and its p-value as well. And then, of course, we can also give its confidence intervals alongside it as well. And exactly the same process would, would work if you wanted to report those odds ratios instead. So with regards to these threshold coefficients here, what do these mean? Well, often these aren't reported and, and they represent intercepts, and specifically the points in terms of the logit structure where the participants might be predicted to be in the higher categories. So the worst to bad here is the likelihood of being in the worst category, saying that Coldplay the worst compared to the other categories. Bad to okay is the likelihood of being in the bad category or the worst category compared to all the other categories. And then okay to pay to see them is referring to being in the okay, bad, the worst category compared to the pay to see them category. Now, it is quite important that we do an assumption check, which is test of parallel lines or proportional odds. And this is essentially to test the assumption that the effect of each IV is the same for each change point in the DV. For example, the effect of stupidity on the likelihood of moving from stating that Coldplay are the worst to just bad is approximately the same as the effect of stupidity on the likelihood of moving from believing Coldplay just to be bad to being okay. So we need the odds of this change to be roughly proportional. So we can test that using the Brandt test. We'll get a Brandt test for the overall model and then for each IV. And we want the Brandt test to be non-significant because the null is the assumption of parallel lines. In order to run this, we can't run it using the, from the CLM command. So what we're going to briefly do is just use another package. So to do this, I need to use the POLR command, which is from the last package, which we installed earlier. And I fit exactly the same model. 
same IVs, same dependent variable in the same way. Data, same data, obviously, but we just write S equals true. And this will fit the same model. It's just using a different package to fit it. We click run. So now I've computed this, this will enable me to use the brand package to produce the brand test. And to do that, I just type brand T. We'll click run. Here's my brand test. So that's the omnibus test. That's the overall model. And then for each of the independent variables in my model, and none of them are significant. As you can see, it tells us the null hypothesis is the parallel lines regression assumption holds. So I have passed that assumption. So I can use my normal regression results. I can trust them. So finally, I'm just going to show you this is the reason why I haven't used the polar function, but you can do. If I get the summary for model T. can say um, it won't give it doesn't give me p values directly and um, there's, there's a reason for this it's described very well in the mass package documentation so you may want to refer to that if you you may not want to use p values for the ordinal regression either you can if you do use this method you can you produce p values relatively easily but you just need another package to do it you need the aer package so i've got that installed i'm just going to pull out on the library and then we we just type coef test from the AER package, and then that will expand our table. But you can see, if you do so, it sort of combines everything into it. Just gives us a test of Z coefficients, which gives us p-values for all the Z coefficients. So for the intercepts or the thresholds or our coefficients, and you can see it's just a little bit less easy to read. That's the only reason I don't particularly like using it. You'll note it calls it intercepts, the thresholds here, but as I said earlier, these thresholds are the intercepts. And that's it for doing an ordinal regression. It's not actually that commonly used when it probably should be a lot more commonly used because it's quite a useful test. Data and code as ever are in the link below this video.